Christian Church, I am so excited that God has given me another opportunity to share His Word with you today. If I haven't had the opportunity to meet you, I would love to get a chance after service to just shake your hand and talk to you and get to know you better. We're in this series called On the Road, and we're looking at Jesus' journey from Galilee all the way to Jerusalem. And along the way, Jesus tells really good stories. He meets individuals, shares transformative parables and invite some unlikely people to join him on that road. And as we do, I want you to think about the time when you are on the road and how you drive. You see, there are many people who drive very safe. They are very defensive. Now, by the show of hands, how many of you would say that you're a safe, safe, and defensive driver? Okay, just a few of you. I can verify with your spouse after, after the service. <laughs> But how many of you would say that you are, you are more passionate and adventurous drivers? That would be me. You know, I am a passionate and adventurous driver. I like to drive fast. And, and I know a lot of the people who are passionate and adventurous drivers, they also live generally in Massachusetts. I've seen the way they drive, man. They are passionate and adventurous. Now, no matter how you and I drive, regardless of how you and I drive, all of us are on a journey. All of us are on a path called life. All of us have dreams. All of us have goals. We, we are trying to get somewhere in our lives. Many of us are even trying to be on the path that Jesus has called us to be. And I believe that this morning, Jesus has a very important question on the road that he wants to ask you and I. Here's the question. Are you using what God has given to you uniquely to make an impact for His purposes that only you can make? That only you can make. Now that's a big question, but the good news is that we don't have to do this by ourselves. That Jesus Christ is on that road with us, alongside of us, in this journey. And today, as we follow Jesus on this journey, I want to say that no matter what your past is, no matter the mistakes that you've made, that Jesus can use you and I to make an impact for his kingdom. God has entrusted each and every one of us with three T T's, three things, time, treasures, and talents. And if we put those in use in a, in a right way, we will see that we can build Jesus Christ's church up, that we can build other people up, and we can make the biggest impact that Jesus wants us to make. So we'll be taking a good look at what Jesus has given us, and we're, we're going to see if we're using all these gifts for ourselves or for the church to point ourselves in the right direction. And we're grateful for God's word. And if you have God's word today, will you please open with me to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, that's where we're going to be. Verses 11 through 26. So I'll start in 11. It says, While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable, because he was near Jerusalem, and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. Now it's going to look like something big, something grand is about to happen, that Jesus is going to die on that cross, and maybe even rise up from the dead, and then after that, the world is going to be solved. His kingdom would come right then and there. But Jesus is saying that, no, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. He's trying to give people a warning that I'm not coming back right away. But here's a story of how you might live in the meantime while I'm gone. He starts in verse 12. He says, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called his ten servants and gave them ten minas. Put them to work, put, put this money to work, he said, until I come back. Now when you're hearing ten minas, if you're like me, you're like, what in the world is a mina? I thought the same thing. But then when I did some digging and I read some commentary, I found out that a mina was a unit in Jesus' time that was comprised of hundred denarii. And here's a picture of a denarius. This hundred denarii would comprise one mina. It was three months worth of work. 
Now, to put it in our American context, it would be like 12,000 US dollars, 12,000 dollars. So this king is giving all these 10 servants $12,000 and he is saying, invest this money while I'm gone. He's saying that. And so we, we, see, we see in verse 14, but his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained. Now he's back and he's, he's examining. 16, the first one came along and said, Sir, your mina has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in very small matter, take charge of ten cities. Then the second one came and said, Sir, your mina has earned t five more. And, and his master said, you take charge of five more cities. And so the master returns and he sees these two servants really investing in what he had given them. And he says to them, well done, my good and faithful servant. Everyone wants to hear well done. Man, everyone wants to hear good job. No one wants to uh, work really hard on a project and say, man, you completely stunk at that project. No one wants to hear that. Everyone wants to hear, good job and well done. Now the third servant comes along and let's see what he says. He said, sir, here is your mina. I kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. Now wrapping money in a handkerchief at that time was considered one of the most uh, irresponsible ways to take care of money. And it suggests that this servant was either committing treason or he was completely stupid or both, or, or both. So, so he, he, he said this response in 21. He said, I was afraid because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words. You wicked servant, you knew, did you, that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow. Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so when I came back I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, Take this mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten. Sir, they said, he already has ten. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away from them. Now for the longest time, even though I'm a pastor, even though I've read this parable many times, for the longest time, I didn't know what Jesus Christ was saying when he was saying that, that to the one who has nothing, even what he has will be taken away from him. I never got that until I read what Eugene Peterson wrote. You see, Eugene Peterson wrote the message, and it's like a commentary that he wrote on the entire Bible. And he said this in 24, then he said to those standing there, take the money from him and give it to the servant who doubled my stake. They said, but master, he already has double. And this is where it made sense to me. He said, that's what I mean. Risk your life and get more than you've ever dreamed of. Play it safe and end up holding the bag. Now it makes sense that Jesus is calling you and I to be outside of our comfort zones. He's not calling us to live, live these comfortable lives. And this morning, I believe that Jesus is asking us a very important question. And that question is, are you using what God has given to you uniquely to make an impact for his purposes that only you can make? Every single day we should be asking ourselves this question because a lot is at stake in the way we answer this question. So there are three things that God has given us. And if we invest these three things in the right way, we can build other people up. We can build the church up in the right way. The three T's. First of all, time. God has given us this time. He's entrusted us with this time. In the, before his second coming, he's given us all this time. When we look at our day, that every single person has 24 hours in a day. Everyone has 60 minutes in an hour and everyone has 60 seconds in a minute, how are you and I using this? God tells us that to use our time wisely. 
Last week, Pastor Dave Ripper shared with us that Martha in the scriptures, she was occupied, she was busy with a lot of things, but only one thing mattered because there's only one who's worth living for and his name is Jesus. As you look at your time, as you look at your calendar, how much time are you investing with Jesus Christ on a daily basis? Are you taking out 10 minutes to, to pray? Are you reading his, his scripture, his word every single day? Going back to the parable, we see that this first servant was given $12,000 and he, in, he invested it in a manner where he got $120,000. That's a lot of money. But when I dug deeper, I found out that he really used his time in a right way. He worked really hard with what was entrusted to him. You see, our life is very short. Our life is very short. I'm going to be 30 this year, and I'm realizing that my life is shorter every single year. The Bible tells us in Psalm 90, 12, it says, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. The writer of Psalms also writes that our life is like a breath. It's like a smoke. It's like a passing shadow. It's like wind that passes away and grass that withers. Then James, we see that our life is compared to mist. This mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Life is short. What are you and I doing with that time that God has given us? Are you serving in the church? Are you serving in one of the amazing local organizations that we support? If not, I want to really encourage you to look at your calendar, to look at your time and see where you can cut back on some of the other things so you can invest this time that God has given you to the things that matter to God. A lady that has inspired me a lot Who's used her time, who used her time in a right way, that lady is Mother Teresa. And Mother Teresa did some really amazing things with the time that God has, had entrusted her. And one of the occasions when Mother Teresa visited my hometown, my grandma was chosen to be her escort and to show her around. You see, my grandma and my grandpa did a lot of social work. So you can see in this picture, Mother Teresa is sitting right in the middle and they're, they're, they're showing her around. But Mother Teresa said something really good. She, she said, not all of us can do great things, but all of us can do small things with great love. We don't have to put this pressure and burden on ourselves to do grand and great things. But we only got to do small things with God's great love. Josh Wilson wrote a song recently called Dream small. And this song has ministered to me in a great way. And I want to read the lyrics of this song. He said, it's a mama singing songs about the Lord. It's a daddy spending family time the world thinks he can not afford. These simple moments change the world. It's a pastor of a tiny little church. 40 years of loving on the broken and the hurt. These simple moments change the world. Dream small. Don't buy the lie, you got to do it all. Just let Jesus use you where you are one day at a time. Live well, loving God and others as yourself. Find little ways where only you can help with his great love. A tiny rock can make a giant fall, dream small. And I love these next two lines where he says, it's visiting the widow down the street or dancing on a Friday with your friend with special needs. These simple moments change the world. Simple moments, great big investments change the world. What, are, what is something this week that you can do to show God's love to someone this, this very week? God has given us time to invest, but he's also given us talents He's also given us talents. These are called spiritual gifts. Now, God has given us all, all, all of us gifts, but some are more gifted than others, right? Have you ever seen someone who's just, man, dripping from giftedness? Their, their entire face is dripping from giftedness. Their, their nostrils are dripping from giftedness. They can't have enough Kleenex to ca catch this giftedness. It's nuts when you see people like that. But when you see people like that, 
I want to encourage you to stay in your lane. What does stay in your lane mean? It means don't look at your left or right or what people have. It means just keep going straight. It's like driving in the car. You can't be looking at left, right. You'll start drifting and, and ultimately crash. We got to stay in our lane and make use, best use of what God has given us for his glory. Now, if you've ever felt this, this, uh, this way, that someone is more gifted than you, then just look at the person next to you right now and just tell them, I'm going to stay in my lane. Let's do it. I know it's uncomfortable a little bit. Let's do it. I'm going to stay in my lane. I'll tell my wife, I'm going to stay in my lane. She's more gifted than me, so I'm going to stay in my lane. God has given all of us these gifts to make his light shine. Just like he said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, when he was preaching the Sermon on the Mount, he said, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do people see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven? Are we living in that way? You see, each of us is a team player. We're all part of the body of Christ. Romans 12, 4 to 8 says, For, for just as each of us have, has one body with many members, and these members do not have the same functions, so in Christ, though many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We all have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesizing, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, and I want to add this, serve with all your heart. If it is teaching, then teach with everything you got. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement every single day. If it is giving, give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Dr. Warren Wiersbe said, he said, spiritual gifts are tools to build with, not toys to play with. Are we building God's people up with our gifts? Are we building the church up with God's gift? This past week, there was a lady who was going through a really hard time in her marriage. And she set up a time to meet with Katie, who's my wife, on Friday. And see, on, on Thursday, Katie had a really bad infection that kept her in the bed. And she was in a lot of pain, even the next day. But she got out of bed and she went and sat with this lady for two hours just listening, loving, caring, and praying for her in ways which Jesus would do. We don't have to do great grand things. We just have to do small things with great love. And sometimes the, the most meaningful thing you and I can do is just to sit with someone. If you've ever had a friend who's lost a loved one, they don't need all this advice. They just want you to sit with them and hug them and tell them that, that you love them. That's all. All of us have time. All of us have treasures. All of us have talents. And finally, all of us have, have treasures that God has entrusted us with. Matthew 6, 19 through 21 says, Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Everything belongs to God. Every good gift that we have belongs to God in the first place. What are we doing with what he's entrusted us with? In the parable, we see that the faithful servant invested the money and the, the foolish servant didn't invest anything. Which servant are you? Which servant am I? You see, in our church, we have generosity moments every single week. We talk about that with your giving. It's not only affecting Nashua and Milford, but it's affecting the rest of the world. We have mis missionaries in India, in Africa, in El Salvador. We have local organizations who are helping the immigrants, who are helping the needy, who are helping the people who don't, don't know how to speak English, who are helping the people who are being abused. Are you using what God has given you? 
to make an impact for his purposes that only you can make. I want to encourage you, if you've never ever given, I want to encourage you, will you consider to give for the first time? If you give one or two percent, will you consider to give three? If you give five percent, will you give six? And if you give 10 percent, God bless you, will you consider to give above and beyond? We really believe that God is doing something really special at our church. I was moved this week when, when I was at part of the staff meeting on Wednesday. We were all sitting down in a circle and we were sharing left and right what God is doing in this church. And tears were rolling down out of our eyes. And I was so excited that I'm part of Crossway Christian Church. I called my wife and I said, I've had the best staff meeting I've had in my entire life. God is moving here at Crossway Christian Church. How can you help with this? How can you invest the money that God has entrusted you with? Are you using what God has given to you uniquely to make an impact for His purposes that only you can make? All of us have the three T's. It's time, talents, and treasures. Of these three, which one can you look at this week and say, that's the area that I need to work on. Maybe it's your time. Maybe you need to set out time, 10 minutes every single day to read God's word and to pray and to listen to these amazing worship songs like Josh Wilson's song, Dream Small. Maybe you need to look at your talents. Maybe you're using all, those, all that giftedness for yourself. Maybe you need to use it for the church. And maybe it's generosity it's your treasures. Maybe you're just using it for yourself, for your entertainment. Will you consider investing in, in the church? It makes a difference. It makes a difference. And I want us to be a church that invests generously in things that matter most. You see, in the, in the parable, the king returns. This parable is really about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is going to come back one more time. The question is, are you and I ready? Because when this time Jesus comes back, he's not going to come in a, in a humble way. This time Jesus is going to come with a big bang. This time Jesus is going to come with, as, as a king of kings and the Lord of lords. This time Jesus is going to come on the clouds with all his glory. This time he's going to come as, as the king. This time when he comes down, Man, trumpets are going to sound from heaven. This time when he comes back, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Lord. If that day were to happen today, if Jesus were to come back today and to ask you and me, I gave you time, I gave you talents, I gave you treasures. Did you invest it in my kingdom? Did you invest it in my church? Did you invest it in my people? What would you and I say? I pray that all of us can say that, God, we invested what you gave us. Jesus, we gave it our best. And at the end of our lives, we could say what Paul said. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness with which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Then Jesus will look at us with a smile and say, well done, good and faithful servants. You have been faithful with the time, talents, and treasures I've given you. Come, come for eternity. Come home and be part of heaven. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we come to you and we just thank you so much that your word challenges us. Father, we thank you that your word gives us wisdom to count our days. Father, I pray that as we look at our time, I pray that we would invest it wisely, that we would invest it in loving people, that we would invest it in, in praying to you, in reading your scriptures, in listening to praise and worship songs, in serving at a local organization that is helping all these people in need. Father, I pray that we can look at our talents, the gifts that you've given us, that we can really use it to build your church, to build other people up.
I pray that we can really take a good look at our treasures. I pray that we would give you our best, not our leftovers. Father, and I also pray that if there's anyone who's listening to this, who's never given their life to you, that today would be the day that they would give their lives to you. Thank you, Father, for the investment that you have made in us by dying on that cross so that we would have eternal life forever and ever. I pray all these things in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen.